Hi, I'm Robert from Manhattan Wood Project. And I want to thank you for joining me on this tips video. Today, I want to talk about the process that I used to take a complex 3D design from Google SketchUp and make it work with Inventables' free computer-aided machining program, Easel. Now, in my previous video, I made a step stool from a single sheet of plywood sheathing that was 22 inches wide and 31 inches long. It consisted of nine parts, two sets of legs with holes for the braces, four 90-degree arcs to act as the braces, the seat, the back slash handle of the stool, and a cap to go on the bottom part of the handle to help further lock it in place. Now the seat is one of the most complex parts since it has one hole and five pockets going to two different depths. The hole at the top is for the handle to fit through. There's four pockets going half the thickness of the wood for the legs to lock into, and there's one very shallow X-shaped pocket to act as a sort of glue reservoir. I added that since the glued area of the legs is effectively in green, so more glue is probably more better. If you look closely at the hole in the four pockets, you'll see that the cut shapes aren't exactly rectangles. That's because the bit I'm using won't be able to cut sharp corners, since a round object can't cut a sharp corner. So the only way to get the rectangular tabs on the legs to fit is to either manually round off the corners with, the, uh, with a file or a knife, something like that, or to extend the corners about half bit size. I chose to extend the corners of the pockets themselves, since they'll be hidden when I assemble the stool, and it'll help contain some of the excess glue. If the joint is going to be hidden, it doesn't hurt to design it so that it's easier to assemble without having to use a knife or file to make it fit. Now just to make sure the joints would be completely hidden, I designed it so that the legs and the handle would overlap the joints. Now Google SketchUp is a great design program, but it doesn't generate G-code, which is the code used to tell a CNC how to move. There's add-ons that can do that, but I don't know if they're compatible with Easel. Since I can't generate G-code that I'm comfortable using, I need to transfer my pattern to Easel so it can generate its own G-code. To do that, I'm going to make a scalable vector graphic drawing, also called an SVG, using the Flight of Ideas SVG add-on. After fully designing the stool in SketchUp, I had to make all of the parts two-dimensional. This meant disassembling the part and pushing everything down to be on a single plane. To be perfectly honest, this was probably the most complex and painful part of this whole project. I had to make sure that parts with pockets, which are holes that don't go all the way through, weren't oriented or squished down such that the pockets were hidden. To make the SVG itself, I selected all of the solid faces on the two-dimensional plane. Notice how I didn't select the edges, the areas inside the holes or the pockets, or any lines. I don't tend to get good results when I select them. After selecting all of the faces, I click on the SVG button, choose the resulting file name and location, add a page border, and hit save. Now the page border may not be necessary, but it works and it gives me a warm fuzzy. Now the file has been exported as an SVG, but sometimes Easel doesn't like to play with SVGs like this. I don't know why, but it'll tell me there's something like 20,000 pieces and crash. So before I go to Easel, I go to MakerCam.com and open the SVG. You can see how it opens it up, all the parts are there. It's a good idea to make sure that all the pieces are there and that it looks as clean as you want it to be. Now it looks like there's a lot that MakerCam can do, but I don't mess with any of it since I'm going to be using Easel to do all the machine design work. So after opening the SVG and verifying it's correct, I just save it again as an SVG. After that, Easel usually opens it. I don't know why, but apparently Easel likes MakerCam flavor SVGs. Now it's time to bring the design into Easel. I'll import it as an SVG and verify it has a reasonable number of objects. In this case, it says there's 21 objects, which sounds good to me. An object is basically any closed loop, so the seat itself consists of the outer design object, five rectangular objects, and one X-shaped object. After importing the SVG into Easel, it's time to arrange the pieces such that I have the least amount of waste. I prefer to do it by hand since I may care about the grain direction on individual pieces. In the case of this stool, though, I just want to make it all fit on my 22-inch wide piece of scrap sheathing since I'm just going to paint it. After I have everything in the correct position, I start setting the machining details for each cut. Details like cut depths for pockets whether an object should be cut inside, outside, or on the line, the number and location of tabs, 
and bit sizes and feeds and speeds. All these are details that I may put in a later video if there's any questions about it. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you on the next project. Well, what should I make today? Manhattan Wood Project. That looks great!